This is a headgum podcast. Folks, it's time to get quip. Me and Joe do it. It makes toothbrushing easy. Brushing your teeth, just like making love. The kind of thing you don't really know if you're doing it right till you start doing it right. And folks, quip is brushing done right. It's the new electric toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibrations into a slimmer design at a fraction of the cost of bulkier traditional electric brushes. It has guiding pulses that alert you when to switch sides, making brushing just the right amount of effortless. It's true. You really don't have to think about it. It lets you know when to move on to another quadrant of your mouth. Quip also comes with a mount that suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel anywhere, whether it's going in your gym bag or your carry-on. And because the thing that cleans your mouth should also be clean, Quip subscription plan or subscription plan, surprised they didn't think of that, I'll, I'll have to let them know, refreshes your brush on a dentist-recommended schedule. They deliver new brush heads every three months for just five bucks, including free shipping worldwide. Quip's backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals, including dentists, hygienists, and dental students. Most toothbrushes don't get named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of the year, but Quip did. It's time to find out for yourself why. Quip starts at just 25 bucks, and if you go to getquip.com slash see you right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash see you. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash see you. Folks, it's going to be love at first brush. Folks, because we kept you uh, on hold um, for about a month and a half and didn't give you new episodes, and many of you were just being straight up dicks about that, um, <laughs> but a lot of you were very nice and supportive, um, we wanted to reward you. The biggest request we get is a return to the old commentary episodes of yore, and tonight surprise, we're doing Surprise, surprise, surprise. We told you we were given uh, new episodes every other week. Nope. You're getting two weeks in a row. We told you we weren't doing any commentaries anymore. Nope. We're doing one right fucking now. Yeah. So we're mixing it up. And that movie is The Human Centipede, first sequence. You all know this flick. We don't need to do a synopsis. If you want to watch it along with us, we're streaming it from Netflix. Go ahead and pause the tape now and go find it. All right. We're back. We're paused up on the IFC opening screen. Get yourself there. If you need to pause again, do it. We're at 128.10 if you need to sync. That makes, that's a better way to do it yeah. than my way. You never did this well back in the uh, day. So I'm going to count to three, then say play. So one, two, three, play. play. All right. And now, Joe, you've seen The Human Centipede. Am I right? Only in real life. I've never seen the film <laughs> adaptation. Joe was the tail of one for uh, the bulk of 2013. And uh, good eating. Good eating, from what I've heard. Um, That's how I described it. Starring Dieter Laser. That can't be a real... And you know why this is probably not a real name? Because my biggest question with this movie and this entire franchise is how do you, as an actor... Mom, I'm out in Los Angeles. I know I'm not getting the parts, but I, I got to stick it out another year. I know I'll get something. And then finally, that call home. Mom, I booked something. I'm in a movie. <laughs> really? What's it called? The Human Sent... Ooh, it sounds kind of creepy. What's it about? Well, um, I play a girl whose lips get sewn. Are you, you're, you're missing all these other names, by the way. Are you seeing these names? Ilona Six. Oh, the last guy's name was Holig Spies. <laughs> okay, I think these are all fake names. Look at these names. Well, Tom Six well, is Tom, the director. Yeah, Tom Six is the director. But I think they're fake names because of that. Like, if I was in this movie, I couldn't tell my parents I was in it. That me, would just never get told. Let me tell you why you're wrong. Dietrich Laser is not a girl, first of all. Because Dietrich's a man's name. No, Dietrich no, 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 Laser is the guy. I he's know. the he's the seventy year old man. So I don't think he was calling his mom about anything when he got this. <laughs> the, uh, I'm saying I'm talking about the actors at large. I know Dietrich Laser uh, is probably 
Uh, but is that his real name? I thought I, I, Udu Kier was in this. Am I wrong? Isn't that Dietrich Laser? That guy? I thought. Oh, no. who He's Udi, Udi Kier. I thought it was Udo Kier, but I didn't see him in the credits. But I was looking at you. Uh, I I don't know. I got real wound up on who Dietrich Laser was. My Lord, an, we've botched this already. It's an awesome name. Can you stop that thing from bouncing in the bottom of the screen? Folks, I have uh, OCD for weird things. But when, when an icon is bouncing in the bottom of the screen, I go completely insane. Uh, I have a quick story about this film. My mom, uh, I was over. Well, her- I didn't finish. Oh, my- I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you, call, you call home sorry. and you got to tell your mom and your dad and presumably grandma, grandpa. I'm in a movie. When can we see it? Well, you can't see it. You can't. See- no, my granddaughter's finally in a movie. I got to see this thing. I mean, what do you do? They you, wouldn't speak to you again. You say, you say, Nana. Open your mouth and I'll show you what this movie's oh, all about. Oh, no. And then if, if I feel like I'm being a little too subtle or, or uh, metaphoric, then you'd shit in her mouth. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> so wait, why was he? He was looking at that. Icon. How is it still? How is it bouncing <laughs> over the full screen? <laughs> we put the movie in full screen. The goddamn Epson <laughs> update for the printer is still bouncing over it. I can't. I, we just got to deal with it. Because if I but open I, that, I, I'm afraid it's going to fuck this oh, up. Oh, God, I hate this. Look at this guy taking a shit. Who directed this? Bruno Kirby? <laughs> uh, Tom Six. Very close. Second um, week in a row, Bruno Kirby reference. It is. I love Bruno Kirby. But uh, well, he was looking at a picture of a dog sniffing another dog's ass. Are we to believe that that gave him the idea for this? No, no, no. Those were three dogs connected. He's like, I think he's, oh, he's done, done this. Them. He's done this on okay. dogs. And it now just looked like a dog sniffing another dog's ass to me. That in real life, that's probably all it was. I would think. Yeah. But this girl's in it, and she. By the way, they didn't shoot this thing in Hollywood, buddy. This was shot Canada or something. No, I think deep, deep. My bet would be deep in Austria, <laughs> deep in the hills of Austria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this has got Eastern Europe written all over it. Strong acting right off the jump. Folks, what I should have uh, probably said at the beginning is that you don't have to watch along with these commentary episodes because Joe and I very often don't talk about what's <laughs> happening on screen. But I think you'll get more out of it if you did. But I think some people, the issue we were having is people weren't listening in their car they said, oh, I, I like to listen at the gym and I can't because I, you know, you can't please everybody all the time. And as we're learning, you can't please anyone any of the time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now, I guess they're in Holland. The one girl just said we brought so and so a present from Holland. And I believe that they are possibly talking to a grandmother character in this scene. I think so. Yeah, because there's a little bit of a big bad wolf or Goldilocks type thing or Hansel and Gretel that they're trying to do and. Yeah, Amy is who they were talking to. Yeah. Whoever, uh, distant thunder, rumbling, rainfall. You know, closed caption, I don't need every sound spelled out. <laughs> you know, I was watching, uh, I watched all six of the uh, the stand-ups special, and, and uh, I'm not going to ask your opinion on things. You know, we're in the comedy community. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have opinions. But look, I thought... Many of my friends did them. Yeah, I thought a lot of them yeah. were really funny, and, yeah. and I, I'm not saying that because they were bad. I'm saying that because... Right. I'm not asking and don't take our lack of commenting as a uh, a vote either way. But I was watching Dion Cole. Yes. And the uh, closed captioning, because I was watching it at the gym, said audience laughs quietly after one of his jokes. Oh, and I was like, on. I don't need that judgment call from you. Come on. And neither does Dion Cole. Thank come you very on. much. Just put laughter or don't put it. It's a comedy show. We figure they're laughing. By the way, does the, does a deaf person from birth even know what laughter is? Or, I mean, they know what it is by definition. They know what it sounds like. So Probably is there not. a difference between quietly and regularly? It's, no. it's laughter. They, no. It's a joke. Yeah, that's that's deaf discriminatory as far as I'm concerned. I took a screen grab of it, and there's a, there's a classic Instagram coming your way. Um, so you can see this in action. Another classic Walsh Instagram. I'm like that rapper who goes, another one. After every hit he, he produces, yeah. I do it on my Instagrams. Another one. Here's the one Here's the one I'm thinking to do. And you know the one of uh, 
It's a meme. You know the one of uh, Patrick Stewart from Star Trek, the big, that's a popular picture yeah, yeah, where yeah. he's making that what the fuck face. Right. I was going to just put uh, you're in italics. Uh-huh. You're in the emoji movie? Come on, man. <laughs> that's good. Because he's in it. Yeah, a little bit of that a movie. Reverse. I, I mean, it, it, it's. I get the, the the red I see when I drive down Sunset Boulevard and see billboards for the Emoji Movie. I know. And every billboard, for those of you that don't live in Hollywood, I don't know if you have billboards in your town, too. Your town's probably much brighter than the one we live in, so you don't have these. But the, the, the fucking... Uh, uh, it's a goddamn movie about cell phones. The bo- billboard I saw today was an emoji, and it goes, it goes, meet jailbreak. So, so like, it's not just emojis now. It's also just, like, every aspect of the cell phone. <laughs> this so, is a world we live in. This is, and by the way, the people that make this movie, I really need to say this out loud somewhere to somebody. Please. The people who make this movie are also, many of them, the people you hear mostly on the internet talking about how they hate Trump supporters and middle Americans, yet they make the product that is a hundred percent aimed towards the people they shit on all the time. It's true. It's so fucking hypocritical. It it's really true. annoys me. Anyway, um, sorry. I heard, I don't, I'm not meaning to get it, on my if high If you want to get more upset, I believe it was written on spec, meaning it wasn't like a pitch or wasn't like, we got to get an emoji movie going. It was written as a script that sold for $1 million. The emoji movie was? Yeah. So somebody wrote that. That's right. That didn't come out of some dipshits in an office. That's that's exactly right. Joe, can I get you to turn this down a little bit? Because it's distracting to me. You can, e- you can even mute it. The film turn it down? Yes, please. Uh, I'd like to keep a little volume because I remember from the old days. How's that? Good? I'd go down a little bit more. I, Oof, I, I have just, a brain that can't really separate things. Just caught a screen cap. Or, as I did as well. Or a quick as well. Two asshole eating women. You know, and usually I got to tell you, folks, women eating ass in a movie would usually just, just, just light my day up. <laughs> but in this film, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's weird how much more, uh, even in the five-ish, uh, five-ish Finkel, even in the five-ish years since Human Centipede dropped, uh, it's crazy to me how much more en vogue ass eating has become. It's discussed a lot, <laughs> and it's disgusting. And it's disgusting a lot. The, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I get it. I, I'm not. I'm certainly not a not a uh, anti fan, but boy, has it really hit the mainstream in a big way. Yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite old dice jokes. Is he goes, oh, he he says to a guy, he, he brings up ass eating to a guy in the audience, and the guy groans. Yeah, and then dice goes. Oh, come on. You're not an ass eater from way back. <laughs> like it was like a neighborhood <laughs> game. Yeah. Then he goes, ass eating, an art form. Uh, it's a funny joke. Yeah. All right. Uh, but uh, he, he, for an ass eating bit, it's very funny. Sure. The uh, I, Here's my story about Human Centipede. I go home a few months ago to visit, and my mom and I are scrolling through her like ne- Netflix queue. Sure. You know, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, it's like Bride of Frankenstein, Jesus of Nazareth. The art of sensual massage. <laughs> Human centipede. Really? Yeah, and I go, I go, why do you have human centipede in there? She goes, I don't know. It, I like horror movies. It looks, I don't know. I, it Oof. might be pretty good. And I go, do you know what it's about? Yeah. And she goes, no. And I go, okay. And she goes, what? And I go, no, no, no. I want you to watch it. I want you to get oh, back to Joe. me on this and tell me what you thought of it. Joe. And finally, I caved and I was like, Mom, this is what it's about. And she was like, OK, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be removing yeah. that immediately. I watched this with my old roommate and dear friend, Jared, and uh, I almost didn't make it. I don't do well with gross out stuff. Um, but at its core, it's a very classic girls lost in the woods, mad scientist thing. But what I have heard what is it these days. Yeah. What I have heard is that two and then three quadruple the uh disgustingness they do but also you know two is about a guy wait i or three one of them is about uh, have you seen all three no i only saw this one okay but at some point in this trilogy they come out of the fictional storyline of the movie and it becomes about a guy who saw the movie and is obsessed with it and wants to do it yes i think that's three and then uh yui bowl right who who (laughs) played that's not his name tom mix no, Yui Bolt, who plays the bad Udo guy? Udo Kier. Udo Kier. Yeah. He becomes, he's in it just as himself. So they do like a Wes Craven's new nightmare sure. kind of thing, except gr- grosser. Right. 
I mean, I I think like a there's like a baby who gets run over by a car and shit. I just oh stop it. I pledge that I would not watch two or three. Um, and maybe we do it as sort of a a challenge for the podcast. I don't want to see it. You can't scrub these things from your brain once you see them. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty gross. It's the feeding scene is pretty gross. I used but to I, hate I it in, in a in a, a a teen movie when you'd see someone shit for 50 you know like like i don't need to see a shit i don't need to what like I, i'm trying to watch the new season of game of thrones there's graphic cuts to shit every 30 seconds and i don't need it uh i do enjoy a good vomit joke in a movie in real life when i see vomit i almost vomit uh, but i mean you so what's your limit like stand by me is certainly gross but they made it look just unrealistic enough no i mean like i like a zany vomit joke i love in bench warmers too. Oh, sure. That's when uh, John Hader shits in the bathroom and he's yeah. like, sorry for what I did in there. And David Spade walks out and pukes like all over the door. Yeah. yeah. Also, another good David Spade one in that movie with Adam Sandler where they blow up the boats and shit. Uh, the runaround or whatever the fuck it's called. We watched it together. I believe the the rundown. Not the no, rundown. that's the rock. The do over the do over. Yeah. That one where he has the key in his mouth and Adam Sandler's like, that was up the guy's butt. And then yeah. he just turns and spray vomits. Yeah, that like, was great. I, th- those kinds of jokes make me laugh pretty Both hard. Both David Spade, interestingly enough. Yeah. Now, Joe, you're lost in the woods. It starts raining. Do you ever just run up to a house? Would you? I, I can't imagine doing it because you're just going to scare the owner. And I mean, well, their car blew out the tires. I mean, they're in trouble. They're they're. So, yeah, in this situation, I would. This girl has decided to take her shoes off right. for some reason as she walks through the wilderness. So this is not Udo Kier. This is I, I, Raven Sunshine. I've lost all t- track of everything. What I just it? know I know Raven Simone's in this movie somewhere. <laughs> what is his name? Dominic Nighttime? Dominic, <laughs> Dominic Poglaski. He's a very nice <laughs> Polish man who runs a plumbing business. I'm going to look it up. He just looks like Udo Kier. That's why that's why I'm mistaken. No, I think that is his name. I feel like I, I feel like I never remembered. I when I saw Dietrich Laser, Dietrich Laser, that's who this guy must be, because what would Udo Kier be if he's not this guy? No, I think this is Udo Kier. So who the hell is Dietrich Laser? That's not Udo Kier. It's not. No. Well, who's Udo Kier then? Oh, wait, Udo Kier is the guy from... Uh, He's in a bunch of shit. Oh, not that guy. Now I know who you're talking about. He's in like Yui Bull type movies. Yeah. No, not that guy. Is that the okay. guy that plays the... Is that the guy that plays the uh, uh, nihilist in uh, Big Lebowski that played the devil in... Uh, plays the devil in uh, uh, Constantine? Oh, boy. You know, the nihilist, the guy that's asleep in the pool in Big Lebowski. No, that is uh, Peter Stormare from Fargo. Stormare. Yeah. He also played the guy Slippery Pete who could get the Frogger machine across the street in Seinfeld. Yes, he did. I, I love seeing him. And it's so weird seeing that actor in a multicam sitcom. <laughs> I know. It's very weird. Yeah. Near the end there, it'd be like James Spader and different. I was like, all right, I'm with it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a it's an Eric Stoltz, I think, pops up in one of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Real indie. I like it. I yeah. like it. Um, Look at so this what, guy, Furious. What? Now, you think this guy could... I mean, he's he's on the he's on the cusp. He's on the cusp of, of creating, of finishing, and fulfilling his life's work here. He's got... Already got a guy in a basement. We already saw that. Right. He's got two chicks in the house. He's got the three for the centipede. He can't even play it not suspicious long enough. Right. He's already looking like a creep. Can you tone it down? Play are it, we play are, it cool. Are we to believe that he arranged this for the girls to show up? Or they just accidentally showed up at the wrong house? No, I think he I think he put a thing in the street that blew their tires out. Oh, OK. Well, that's a good idea then. Yeah. Um. And then when does the Asian guy enter the mix? I remember an Asian guy eating a lot of shit. Or no, he's shitting and he's like, I'm sorry. He's the head of the centipede. Yeah. Which is where you want to be in a human centipede, people. That's just that's just a put that feather in your cap for the future. <sighs> it's where you want to be, except, uh, you know, I'm a, I, I always f- feel overly guilty about things. And that's something I would not shake well. Hey, man. But at least you're not doing both. You got to survive, baby. Yeah. You know? So then... Uh, and I, I want I'm going to touch on this and get immediately off of it. My it, dick. 
if there's sh- folks, if someone's shitting in your mouth, come aren't on, you? That wasn't. I thought that was funny. Wasn't that funny? I'm gonna touch on this and immediately was, get off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if someone shits in your mouth, surely you immediately throw up. So then, are you throwing up into the ass? And yeah. is that included in this movie? I believe it's insinuated. I don't think oh. they. No, yeah, no, because you see puke come out the sides of like oh, the stitches. Oh God, I'm not gonna be able to even look at this. I think you see that. Um, how, how fucking sick do you have to be? Has this guy done anything beyond the Human Centipede? Hey, you know, franchise? Pat, I'll tell you something. I'm gonna walk away from this movie. Say this guy's name should be Tom Six. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, there you go. I like that one. Uh, Tom Six, I think, has only done the three. Correct. Laying on his couch, telling him, I don't like human beings. Oh, because he's already drugged them. Yeah. I'm assuming he's already drugged them. I mean, these chicks could make a run for it right now, though. I mean, play it cool for a minute, buddy. He has three movies in development. Who, Dietrich Laser? No, Tom Six. What are they? The one is called Enjoy. And, And that's about a guy who eats shit, and the guy says Enjoy. One is called Tom Six and the Insanity of Making Another Movie, a documentary on Tom Six. All wow. Right. And the other is called The Onania Club. That's about a club where everybody eats shit. Yeah, that's probably uh, about it. I'm going to look up what The Onania Club is about. I'd like to know what Enjoy is about. I love it if he's one of these. I love when these directors who make like the most depraved shit, they suddenly in the middle of it all, they have like a romantic comedy. Yeah. And they're like, it didn't do well. Why did my romantic comedy not do well? Because you're, like, you're a psycho. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, comes forward in every frame of this film. <laughs> you can't hide it. Um, okay. Oh, the Onania Club is a film that will explore the dark side. No romantic comedies for me. How weird is that? He just said that? That's his quote. Wow. Again, it will, so you and Tom Six are right on the same page. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, boy. It will be a film that will explore the dark side. No romantic comedies for me, said Six. I am now in pre-production of the Onania Club, a very original, highly perverted black comedy that will shake up the world yet again. Whew. Can't say the plot yet because it's so simple, but yet so out there. It's so original. Did Donald Trump write this? I'm sure that South Park is going to make another parody of it. It's really crazy. A very pitch black, dark comedy with horrific elements. It will upset a lot of people again. All right. What's what's enjoy about? I'll look it up. Um, oh, Onania is a synonym for masturbation, by the way. Oh, so it could God. be about masturbation. Well, no, but that probably just means because you're a masturbatory filmmaker. Okay. Oh, wait. Onania Club. That's not the documentary. Sorry. No. Okay. Um, oh, Jesus, God. It's, oh, God. It's, uh, I don't even want to think about it right now. No. No. I should say, oh, he also says that the negative, all the negative reviews of his films only make his cock harder. It's a quote from him as well. Wait, what did he say? Negative reviews of his film only make his cock harder. Oh, there you go. Sorry. All right, so so if you if you aren't watching along and you want to know where we are in the film right now, uh, the girls have been drugged. They're about to pass out, uh, and uh, one girl's desperately trying to make an escape, but it, it's not happening, as we all know. Did they drink the water he presented them with? Yeah, this is kind of on them. Yeah, he gave them water and uh, pretended to make a phone call. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the idea here is, is even if they had run for it, he, they would have collapsed in the woods and he'd still get them. Okay. But at least they wouldn't be in the damn house. I mean, right. You know, this one's getting a needle, I guess, cause she's not taken to the, um, sedative. Well, he gave her roofies. roofies. He said it. He's, he, this, this is one of those bad guys likes to tell you everything he just did. Right. Real, real self-indulgent guy. Now, what do you think this guy's like in real life? You know, I don't think he's that far removed from this character. <laughs> you don't look like that and be normal. There's a guy at my gym who looks exactly like this guy, except with like a Rodney Bingenhammer, black poodle, uh, toupee haircut. Who's Rodney Bingenhammer? He hosts the uh, local like K Rock show. They try to fire him out. You know, he's got like a poodle haircut. Wait, the guy like Rodney on the Sunset yeah. Strip? Yeah. Can he we looks, talk about he's that? He's got guy this for guy's creepy level face, but with. Um, a toupee designed, like he said, give me the Bingenheimer. 
This guy for breakfast, because it's a breakfast scene right now, eats a giant can of Del Monte fruit cocktail, which yeah. I find very interesting. That's his breakfast in the morning. Yeah. Uh, well, he doesn't have to eat shit. He eats the good stuff. The uh, That Rodney on the Sunset Strip thing where everybody's like, this is a crime that you're firing him. And it's like, I get it. He He broke some cool bands and everything. But at the end of the day, guys, can we stop acting like this isn't just a glorified groupie dude yeah like he's exactly just like right. he's just like one of these sunset strip people that just like hangs around yeah and is like i knew the guy that knew the guy when kim deal joined the pixie or whatever you yeah. know it's like well interestingly right, enough relax. joe the only person i saw saying it was a crime to uh to fire this guy is something of a groupie himself who's that well i'm obviously not going to say the person's name on air Oh, I know who you mean. <laughs> um, but All anyway, right, I, I, I wish him well, but it's like if you're a 70 year old man, you're not going to be playing on the local new hot music channel. Well, listen, that, and that and that makes sense. Folks. Also, that's not ageism. That makes sense. Be, be 70 and love music. But at some point you have to stop trying to rock. Yeah, it's like just it gets sad after a while. Yeah, that's like how that guy. Um, who's the guy that 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 made the uh, Runaways? Kim, that creepy fucking guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of those dudes where it's like you know, he's like sixty eight and he's still like I I, I want to rock, baby. Yeah, and you're like just just hang it up, dude. Right. Go listen to rock music. Enjoy it. <laughs> Dress cool if you want. Yeah. But stop wa- strutting. It's just weird. I met uh, one James Eha today. From Smashing Pumpkins? Yeah, he was one of uh, the candidates to do the score for the uh, my my show. Yeah. Um, very nice guy. I didn't really know what to say. I mean, I, I always liked the Smashing Pumpkins. I don't know. I At least Corrigan always referred to them as his backing band who played exactly <laughs> what he told them to play. So I didn't know if it was a touchy subject or not. Um, but he was a guy who... Very nice, but like could not make eye contact and very quiet. It almost felt like it was from years of abuse at the hands of Billy Corrigan, but maybe not. Uh, and he's, he's he couldn't have been nicer. A lot of people, you know, uh, are quiet. It's you not, think it's not a crime? You think Eha's ever going back in the band? You think what? Do you think Eha's ever going back in the band? I think Corrigan calls says, "Hey, they're offering us twelve million to play." Yeah, he's going to go. Well, Corrigan tours with the drummer all the time under Smashing Pumpkins. He right. just doesn't use uh, the. I didn't know his name till you just said it. And the the girl with the bleached hair what was her name. Uh, uh Paz was well, not that Paz. She was in no, she show. was in Pussifer. Yeah, Perfect Circle and Perfect Circle. Yeah. Um, is there's no way we can mute this? Why don't we mute this? Because I, I uh, whereas you have a problem with sound, I have a problem with no sound. I'll get completely lost. Even with subtitles. Yeah, I like to have a little sound. Are you that distracted? We're just listening to to beautiful women tortured and screaming while I'm trying to talk about James Eha. It's a little for much me. for me. It's look at look at me. You, all right, can I lower? I was. Can I, I was lowered looking. a little. <laughs> yes, I was looking directly at you because I didn't want to see what was happening on. When screen. we moved over to all subtitles, I remember having a very hard time. All right, like staying in the moment, and I was like really drifting and stuff. Hold on a second. Where is it? Oh. It's over here. Hold on a second. Oh, boy. This is your house, Joe. <laughs> I forgot. Let's try it there, all right? And if it still bothers you, we'll go even lower, all, all right? right because I'm an accommodating guy. When we get into them going like, like I don't want to hear shit gurgling sounds while I'm trying to remember in a music anecdote well, about being on the bus. I've got to be honest with you. I want to hear you hearing shit gurgling sounds. Uh-huh. I mean, I feel like that's part of the joy of this. I, I'm really, I'm already <laughs> just very disturbed by the whole thing. I don't like it. I don't know why. I don't know how I watched this the first time. First sequence. Here comes a, here comes the Asian kid darting his ass because I think this first guy dies somehow. Mm-hmm. Machinery hissing and beeping. Again, there's How a few things. Would you be to die? Like, okay, so serious question. They give you the option. This scientist gives you the option. One week in the centipede, or he puts a bullet in your head right now. What do you do? What happens after the week in the centipede? You're set free, and as long as you didn't somehow die from eating shit, then you're alive. Weak in the centipede. I would ple- I would grab the gun from his hand and blow <laughs> my brains out. I'd take a week in the centipede. I'd take two weeks at the head of the centipede, one week in the middle. I mean, okay, let me ask you this. Let's get, I'm sorry for this question. <laughs> 
it's you, your mom, and your dad oh, in this come guy's on. basement. Would you stop it? Do you take stop do you it. take the bullet and get in the back of the centipede? Are you so no, selfish? Then I take the bullet at that point. Okay, not my mom and my dad. You and I thought you were going to say like it's you and like uh you know uh uh yeah you know dom deluise or something <laughs> you know like, but are you taking the bullet leaving them to centipede it up at, well, that's their fucking problem at this point <laughs> i mean i you know i can't do everything here right so let me ask you this it's you and two close friends are you like selfishly clamoring to be the front of the centipede or are you like you know what you're my friend i love you a, a female friend let's say i'll i'll take the hit or are you saying like you know what you're my dear, sweet female friend. I'm a gentleman. You get up top. I'm going to sit in the back. In front of her, that's what I would say. And as soon as she was out of the room, <laughs> I'd say, she really wants for some reason to be in the middle or the back. She's requesting it. <laughs> like the, the door clicks and like, listen, this girl <laughs> loves eating shit. And <laughs> yeah, because you're still I, thinking maybe after the centipede week is over, you guys have a chance of hooking yeah, up. Yeah. So you're being nice to her. Curb your enthusiasm. Music starts playing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how I would play it. Uh, Oh, he's he's fully explaining to them what's going to happen. He did it with the Rottweilers. Now it's going to be for them. Called it a three hound construction. I will say there's something beautiful about the line three hound construction. (laughs) Yes, they were a big band back in the 70s. Yeah, they were real big on the uh, the hard rock front. I despise this guy's scream and South Park parody, uh, parody that really well, but boy, he has a, a terrible scream. Like, because it's annoying or because it's it's um, uh, upsetting? All of the above. All of the above. I don't like people screaming, you know? Be quiet. I think both of these act- actors, the, the, two, the two females, came back and also played themselves in, like, the sequel. Okay. Uh, I won't watch it. I mean, just now thinking about what I'm about to watch again, I just shivered. I don't know if you caught that, but I shivered. I, I'm I, I look. I owe you one on this. Uh, oh God! Look at this graphic. Look at that. Look at. I love that he puts the little dotted line around the butthole. Yeah. Joe and I were just talking. I I we were walking into the the building and I commented on how much I hate seeing the assholes of dogs and cats. I was I was looking at Joe's dog's asshole at the time. And uh, my cat is so adorable. And then you'll just see like this mutant asshole sticking out. And it's really gross. I think they should cover it with fur. My dog's asshole is uh, pretty. Have some pride. It's pretty well contained, except for when he's about to shit. And then it turns into sort of like. All right. Like the eye of Saren on (laughs) Mount Doom. (laughs) All right. All right. I don't like this stuff. (laughs) I don't like it. Three hound, what was it called? Three hound construction. Three hound construction. (laughs) Oh, this guy doesn't speak English. No, so he doesn't even know what's going on. The Asian guy doesn't even know what the hell is going on. He's just seeing pictures that are suggesting some things. He doesn't, but he doesn't know. Right. But he's lucky. (laughs) He's at the head of this damn thing. Yeah. He's at the head of it. That's where you want to be. A Siamese triplet connected by the digestive system. Oh, he's gagging. Okay. Here's the, the ex- to the excretion of C. Uh, but what does he feed A? I forget. In the South Park, it was cuttlefish. Um, but the guy in the front gets to eat normal food. You want to be. That's great. You're in front. You live. You, you're, you're, you're fucking. You're, you're moving on from the front. <sighs> But you got to live with what you've done. You haven't done anything. You've He's should. not requesting yeah, to do this. That's true. I mean, you know, just. Uh, I guess only in the horror world where you're just trying to up the ante and over extreme everything. Does this pitch go over at all? But I mean, this di- this director has parents, I assume. Like, how do you, how do you face? I guess. You know, porn's the same way, but I'd rather say, look, I did a porno than say. I mean, the movie, here's the thing. Let's <sighs> let's get into a deeper thing here with this film. You know, it, the movie's at best fine. It's terrible. At worst, terrible. Uh, my point is, you, you wouldn't, aside from the content, you wouldn't watch this film and go, this is a well-made movie. It's a no, good movie. no, no. This guy really fancies himself 
uh, an hour tour. Yeah, he 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 really thinks he's like a um, uh, what's his face? That God, man, I can't remember anything anymore. The guy did Annie Christ and uh, oh yeah, uh, Lars von Trier. Here, yeah, he really thinks he's like a Lars von Trier, like like which a you provocateur. Th- what I make you think is shocking, but Ooh, it is beautiful. Christ. What happened? What happened? What I missed? Uh, I missed it. What happened? She just tried to run, and the needle ripped up the length of her arm, and it was really disgusting. So you know it. Do- uh oh. Ugh. Look at this. The, the doors are gone. How are the doors? Go- no, the doors aren't gone. <laughs> There's a door. There's the door. The, front- the door is the front door. Yeah. Jump out a window. God damn it. Or kill yourself. That's what I would do. Throw something through a window. Go. Don't listen at the door. Get moving here. Now, Joe, what do you have to say about uh, the star of the emoji movie? T.J. Miller's claims that women are not as funny as men. Well, what, what do you think about we that? We discussed this on uh, Emotional Hangs, my other podcast, yeah. the other day. Uh, Kurt and myself discussed this. and uh, my f- I, have, I did not read the thing. So my first question was, did he say a thing where he, he, it wasn't that bad and then, and then they took a quote out of it and it sounded no. bad? And then Kurt was like, no, no. He kind of said like it was like pretty bad. And, I was, and then he like paraphrased what he said. And then we were laughing because I was like, it almost sounds like he was trying to be complimentary, but then he's so crazy it came out as a horrible insult. But, yeah. but I mean, well, I've kind of then, then he look, started saying like, I'm the Lindsay Lohan, I'm the I'm the bad boy shaking stuff up by saying provocative shit. I but can't tell if no, he, I can't tell no. if he means it if he's just being a dick. If he's just, I I don't know. TJ's nuts, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I've never had a problem with TJ. I don't agree with his statements. Right. I am getting a little annoyed with him in every interview saying something fiery <laughs> that we're all supposed to react to when yeah. you're starring in the emoji. Movie. The emoji movie. That's right. That's you ruined right. my pause. No, I'm sorry. You, can I do it again? Sure. Being the bad boy when you're the star emoji movie, folks. See uh, how, <laughs> you, you see how this relationship goes. <laughs> um. Oh God. I Pat, get, it's a little fake blood. Well, I'm not even into this shitty. I yet. watched it get ripped out of her arm. I mean, I, I, I got to be in the mood for this kind of shit. I don't. Who's in the, ever in the mood for this kind of shit? Well, it's ironic that I, that I even do a horror movie podcast because I don't really like horror movies. But uh, now she picks up the lamp. Why didn't you do that 20 minutes ago instead of sitting in there waiting? Oh, he's going to break his Why own window. Why is he window. breaking his own window? You don't have a key? Guys, what are we doing here? Joe, what do you think about uh, Donald Trump's ban of transgenders from the U.S. military? <laughs> I, uh, do we think that's pretty cool? Or uh, <laughs> No, I would say it's not cool. That's not cool. Can I tell you, um, I have... I feel like he's doing... I also feel like he's doing it as like a fuck you... Oh, everything he does is a fuck. Like, I feel like he's got his panties in a bunch over the over the health care bill thing. And now he's yeah. going to be like, OK, well, then I'll do this then. Joe, like, he's just being an asshole. What it is. Of course, it's what it is. Uh, it, it, I actually was friends in high school with a girl named Becky, who is now named Blake. And I would definitely not bring this up if she hadn't been on CNN today. Talk about it. it was very cool to see. Oh, that's cool. She is on Facebook and et cetera. She's a very active part of our of our military, risks her life day in and day out. I would rather do almost anything than be in the military. I don't think that makes me a coward. It just makes me a guy who doesn't give a shit about our country anymore. Right. But I just wouldn't be good in a combat setting. What why, is, why would we stop anyone? It's the same thing as, as gays uh, in the military. But why, why are we just and, and if there's not bigger issues going on? I, I, and it's not, saying, a pol- it's not a political podcast. We'll get right off of it. It's it's listen. I'll say this much. If you were and I have no information to back any of this up. Yeah. But if you said to me, by the way, that claim can go with anything we've ever said on. the yeah. podcast. If you were saying to me, hey, if you're in the middle of transitioning, X, Y and Z can happen, which could which could require A, B and C. Sure. Therefore, those costs are too much. Therefore, you have to fully transition before you come in. Then I'd be like, OK, I get I don't know. I get maybe that makes sense. Maybe that's valid. I don't know if it is or not. But to say no transgender costs too much. What well, medical cost? Like what what medical costs does Caitlyn Jenner have that are so much more expensive? It's not his reason. He's doing it out of spite. And the well, military gave that as his reason. Though. The military is not paying for gender reassignment surgeries there's no way that's happening that's what i'm saying i'm there's like no what, way what, i don't i don't get what the medical thing is it's a fake thing so he doesn't look like a complete monster to the left but deep down what he's doing is 
his his racist speech, his hate speech, his homophobic speech is making half of this country or more say, this is what I've been thinking my whole life, but now the president says it, so I guess I'm right. And he's he's ruining the country from the inside out. And it wasn't that great to begin with. I f- it wasn't. I, and I but I also fear that it's that this is yet another hard curveball to get everybody screaming and angry as he goes off and does another terrible thing when we're not looking. Of course. And then I saw both sides. And up. not that this isn't a terrible thing, but you, you know what I'm saying? I do. I, I was on Twitter today for a, a split second. and It was like opening the book of the dead where there's like screams and horrific shit. that I slammed it shut. Uh, I saw both sides people were saying this is obviously a distraction and then well trans people don't consider ourselves distractions etc you're both valid folks we're all Mm -hmm. angry we're all on the same side if you're angry at donald trump let's just be on the same fucking side yeah because uh it's gonna come to us you know being cut off from the country and 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 pushed off to our own community and i welcome it frankly and uh i'll tell you when that happens and you got to rely on your neighbors yeah and all that Right or left. Yeah. I'm going to be in the community for whites only. And I just want to put that out there right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't see it going there. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, before somebody takes that out of context. Right. I watched and I'd like to recommend a fantastic documentary. I saw it on ABC on a Friday night, and I'm sure it's on ABC on demand or something, but it's called like Los Angeles 1982 to 1992, and it's about what led to the L.A. riots and the last hours about the L.A. riots. I knew too little about it, and I'm glad I watched it, and I cried at several points in it, and one was this woman who, like, you met her today, look, you, you'd, you'd go, this is a lesbian, and she, she makes jokes about it. She's like, obviously now, I don't have to tell people I'm a lesbian. They right. get it by my hair. <laughs> and my, you know. She said at the time, her and her partner were out on the streets, and he was like, they're like cocking shotguns getting ready to go into like certain death and he's like look i don't think i'm gonna make it out of this i just have a bad feeling please tell my wife that i love her and tell my kids i love her she's like got it then she tells a story about how they start to walk in and she's like i had had a girlfriend for seven years but was not allowed to in the force discuss my sexuality so i just always act like i was single that sucks and she said my you know partner was a bit of a jock whatever and she grabs his arm not knowing how he would respond and just said, look, I'm gay. Like came, they're getting ready to go into like certain death. She comes out to him in 1992. She's like, look, I'm right. gay. Whatever you think of it, here's my girlfriend's name. Would you please tell her that I love her very much? Whatever. The guy's like, absolutely. I love you. Thank oh, you good. for telling me. It was like a beautiful, I, you know, you could really almost miss up just was, telling the story. But. I thought I was going to go the other way and I was going to, I was getting upset. Yeah, no, but okay. I mean, th- there are a million stories like this. And did he the, make it? She made it. Did they, he make it? He, I don't think did make it, but she didn't. Right. But there are, there are all these stories in there. All you see is like the guy getting hit in the face with a brick by looters a thousand times or, or Rodney King getting beaten a thousand times. So a ton of great stories from that that were like mind blowing to me. Wow. There's also footage of like Korean store owners walking into traffic firing handguns. <laughs> Just like stay away from my store. The <laughs> shooting into traffic. Wow. Uh, it's it was a, a fantastic documentary and nobody mentioned it. Wow. That that, that sounds riveting. I'd like to see that. It's great. I'd like to <clears throat> if, if I could. It's definitely on Hulu. I, I guarantee if that. I could divert our attention back to the film. Yes, for a please, moment. please. Now, the girl that tried to make the escape for it yeah, went into the room. Uh, Bruno Kirby started hitting the glass with the car, with the gun to break his own window. Basically, she's not going to escape. We all know that. Yeah. She ends up in the pool room. Uh, she was down in the pool. He comes in with a gun. He announces to her, you are the middle piece. Okay. She says, just kill me now. He says, I'm not I'm not going to kill you. You're going to be the middle. You're my middle piece. Right. She's in a perfect position to right then get out of the pool and say, let's talk. <laughs> my parents have a lot of money. Uh-huh. You put me at the head of this thing. Baby, you're going to be making centipedes for the rest of your life. <laughs> Why would she yeah. not negotiate? Why would she not negotiate? I think she... I mean, we're just, we're giving what what amount to network notes on the human centipede, but <laughs> um, you know, I think she probably recognizes this guy as somebody who's not open to such negotiations. He's financially well off. He's also designed a uh, you 
know, a system where he's going to sew three people together by their lips and assholes. He's probably not open to a, a discussion. Lips and assholes. Famous line from a John Candy movie. Can you name it? Lips and assholes is from the great outdoors. Yep. Yes. Who says it? Hot about hot dogs. It is said by Dan Aykroyd about hot dogs. And then who says it sec- the second time? There's a callback. All right, I don't remember. The Raccoon, Raiding the Garden. Oh, yeah, I forgot that they were subtitled. Yeah, That's yeah. right. A great uh, Annette Benning performance in Great Outdoors. Yeah. Well, why don't you... Uh, I, I always liked at the end when uh, uh, like the climax of the big fight. Yeah. When John Candy's wife goes to Annette Benning, she goes, why don't you go find yourself spin a washing cycle. Or spin cycle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, do you know that uh, they are remaking it with Mr. Kevin Hart, The Great Outdoors? Uh, no, I did not know that. I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> no, but I'll, I'll check her out. I'm not saying I won't, but, uh, well, I am saying I won't. I got nothing against Kevin. I just don't want to see that. Now, Joe, what do I you think? I think the first one's a gr- like a great movie in the sense of like, this needs to be remade. It's like, tied to my childhood. And yeah. uh, I laughed a lot when I watched it as a kid. You watch it now. It's like shooting the bear's ass off is funny. There's also a fourth of the movie is a horrifically boring teen romance yeah that the pool stick going up her skirt by yeah, accident which oh, i found shit. arousing but yes you know because you want a pool stick between your yeah in the gooch yeah, yeah the sure. old gooch um so now he's going to start the operation look it's a well-structured film yeah, all the it, act breaks are hitting at the right spots well i mean christ you go by a goddamn what's he doing with his knee uh the knee how does the knee factor into a human side oh wait a minute maybe that's maybe that's the bad part about being at the front maybe he cuts your you off at the knees maybe he cuts the bottoms of your legs off i we should have paid a little closer attention to him explaining it well mister i want to turn down the volume and talk about trump i'm glad i did uh i'm not glad i talked about trump because i'm angry but here uh, we are um should we head into a pat's movie corner sure (laughs) I'm just doing anything to keep from watching this movie. Uh, Tooth snaps. Tooth snaps. Heiter breathes heavily. You don't need the Heiter breathes heavily subtitle. No, we're watching with subtitles, folks. I, the, I uh, uh, yeah, because I, I have seen uh, one or two things since we last uh, convened. I had seen them, but we were, we were out of time, and I'd like to share. Go ahead, John. Oh, you can go first. It's your segment. All right. Um, well... I'll start with Baby Driver um, because it, this is the movie the baby limousine driver. Alec Baldwin voices the baby, correct? Boss Baby Driver. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, ugh, now we're just cutting into an ass. Just look at me and talk. Just don't look at it. All right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Baby Driver. Stop I was, looking at it. You're I was, looking at it again. I can't help it. I was excited to see it. I like Edgar Wright. Okay. And I feel like Edgar Wright and I would be friends and we have mutual friends. But I love Spaced. You and Simon Birch are very close, correct? Simon Pegg? Simon Pegg. Or me. Simon Birch is a fictional dwarf who died. <laughs> <laughs> the The kid who played Simon Birch is dead. But I love that movie. Um, he, I love he Simon He dies Birch. in the movie, doesn't he? Yeah. He yeah. died in real life. Okay. Too. That's sad. Sorry. What? Wait. Did you just hear that? Yeah. It won't be in the final thing. We just recorded past the outro. It's fine. Just keep talking. Are you sure this is okay? I don't want to talk now for an hour and then it's not on the final cut. No, this is fine. We just spoke past the f- the outro thing. Okay. If you guys at home just heard a thing that just went, that was a headgum podcast. It's it, it, That was an accident. All right. But I don't think they heard that at home. As I'm well. sure headgum doesn't mind another shout out. Yeah. See, we're still recording. We're Do good. You headgum. You we're all good. You corporate bastards. The, uh, we're all good. All right? Yes. Um... Okay, so Baby Driver, I'm going to walk you through Edgar Wright. I thought Spaced was an awesome show. No office, no British office, but a great British sitcom. I thought that Shaun of the Dead is a fucking fantastic movie. His best work, in my opinion. My favorite, with a slight edge, is Hot Fuzz. I just really loved that. Really? Uh, But then when you get into Scott Pilgrim, I thought you had an amazing first hour that collapsed did you know the original ending of that movie they don't get together and when they tested it the audiences are like 
what did he go through all that for? Right. And they were like, oh, okay, I guess they'll get together then. I didn't know that, no. But <laughs> I, I do know from writing a couple of movies, they never like it when the couple doesn't get together. He looks like Christopher Walken in the Weapon of Choice video here. It's like the same shot. Is that the uh, Daddy uh, Longstroke? Fat Boy Slim. Fat Boy Slim. Daddy Longstroke. <laughs> That's my you, name. Thank you. It's gone, dude. My my my. It's all gone. <laughs> Whatever info I had up there is gone. Daddy Longstroke. It's not a bad name. Uh, anyway, I'm just telling you, I have a uh, the world's end. I thought was a bad movie, um, and I like them just like hanging out in pubs drinking. But by the end, I was like, what? You know, he he has a little bit of a, tr- of a problem sticking the landing for me. He is a visually fantastic director. He's good at, uh, you know, of course, using music and pop. Can I say references. my favorite World's End part really quick? Sure. The part, the entire first hour of the movie, I was like, please, because Nick Frost's character is sober and he's really square. Yeah. And the whole time, I'm like, please get to a point where Nick Frost has to drink. Sure. Please. And then when that finally hits, and not only does he drink, he does every shot on the tray. Yeah. And he's as he's doing them, he just goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was I was howling, laughing in the movie theater. Maybe I should watch it again. I mean, I feel I like I really like that movie, but uh, it's 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 not. It's got problems. It's a weird flick. They, yeah. I mean, I just feel like the movies are unlike anything else, and I admire that. And I admire a lot about them, but they got problems and and more as they go. Now, Baby Driver, folks, we have one of the least defined female characters of the past 20 years, especially in terms of how much everybody is monitoring this stuff and how a female shouldn't be like show up. Literally in this movie, she pours him a cup of coffee. He falls in love with her and is willing to do anything, risk his life, his livelihood for her. Because she's a pretty girl who says hello to him. And they never develop her in any way beyond that. And to see people shit on your La La Land or whatever it is, but not shit on Baby Driver for that is strange to me. Because I I know they like Edgar Wright, but he should be held to the same standard. No, I agree. It's a shittily written female character. And the other female in it is your standard Michelle Rodriguez tough girl who has nothing to do either. I agree. John Hamm and Jamie Foxx are bad in the movie. They're bad in it. And the last hour of the movie goes wildly off the rails. Jamie Foxx has been off his shit for a little while now. Like he, he's the last off few his movies game. he's been making. I'm like, he's off you? his game. The last one I think I saw was Spider-Man. And it was a, I was like, what are you that, doing? I saw that with you. And that is the worst performance of, of recent years, I think. The, uh, by the way, folks, for those of you as listening, a nerd, like doing a, a clumps style portrayal of a nerd. Yeah, it was literally a nutty professor yeah. level. Ke- keeping uh, his uh, tree trunk sized uh, muscles. Right. But he's a nerd. Uh, for those of you at home, the human centipede is up and walking. It has been constructed. Yeah, let's take it. Here's what I'd like to point out. This movie obviously is pretend it's a movie, but when they shot it, at the end of the day, that chick's got to put her face yeah. in that Asian guy's asshole. Yeah. That, I mean, that's all there is to it. There's no way around that. So now let's talk logistics. Does anyone say to him, you got to really clean out that ass? Or does he just know? I, I would think he knows, <laughs> and I would think there would be some discussions about it. You like, would think not there would be. to be crafts. This is delicate, but realize here's how we're doing this. And, yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. That's that ass-eating scene in Girls where... Uh, yes. I forget who the dude was, but he's going after Allison. Uh, yeah. What's her name? Allison uh, Williams. Williams is. I mean, he's daughter of noted liar. His Brian face Williams. is is in her fucking asshole. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Like, and it's. I I mean, unless they fucking uh, painted out like underwear. Yeah. Which I guess they could do. Like they they might have to be honest with you. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm ready for another cocktail here. Uh. I mean, you're really nursing that thing over there. Yeah. I, I am uh, because I'm just kind of traumatized by the film, frankly. Pat also smoked a little reef, which I don't think is something I need to keep secret from all of you. I don't think you need to tell them either, but uh, I like to put it out there just because as I enter my second drink while you're still on your first. Yeah, I just like to point out that you also smoked weed. Shh. Well, then I don't feel like an Joe, alcohol. they don't even need to know we were drinking. You well, see what I'm saying? I'm going to need to walk and make another drink. I think we've talked about this. You don't have to mention it. But when Joe and I do this, we, we have a drink. It loosens up the conversational muscles. I mean, let's be honest. We have more than one usually. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and and usually the podcasts are 45 minutes. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm going to put my mic down. Talk to these people about another movie. You saw. I will. I will. And then I'll come back and I have two. Yes. Um, the But I will say the use of music in Baby Driver. Um, I saw it on a theater with a shitty sound system, the Los Feliz 3, which is my home theater. I can't go there anymore. They're, they're fucking up the sound. I know that's a pretty uh, Los Angeles specific tweet. Tweet? I just said something. I'm calling what I say now a tweet. But, um, you know, it's uh, it needs to be heard, I guess, with a good sound system. But the songs are kind of cool. But there's also a bunch of songs where I'm like, you're making a movie with 45 songs, almost a musical. I don't. I didn't find myself dying to get the soundtrack when I left. Like you see a Tarantino movie, you want to get that soundtrack. I, I don't know. There, there's there's parts about the movie that were kind of fun, but I just thought it was a huge letdown. And I don't get the love for it. Is is what I'm saying. Uh, the other one I saw that I briefly alluded to in the last podcast was The Big Sick, um, written by our good friends Kumail Nanjiani and Emily Gordon. I love them both, um, but even if I didn't. You know, nobody is is overpraising this movie. It's very timely. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a it's a romantic comedy. I think you could watch with your family. And it raises some interesting questions very subtly. It's like political without ever actually being political. And I thought that was very cool. Um, I just loved everybody in it. Holly Hunter's my favorite actress. She's fucking killer in it. Romano's killer in it. Kumail's killer in it. Ah, yeah. Kamel's uh, Kamel's great in it. It's a really effective romantic comedy, and I haven't heard anybody dislike it. So go go see it. Um, our friend uh, Kurt Broneler, who Joe does his other podcast with, is a is a great sidekick in it. It's just a it's a good film. Now, Joe, you want to take over with a, a movie you've seen while I watch a man uh, eat dog food? That he will soon be digesting. Oh, he makes me dog food. It appears that way. Yeah. So I guess you don't get to eat regular food when you're at the head of the centipede. But still, I'll take Alpo over shit. Well, ugh, God, this movie. Why would you do it? That's not dog food. It looks like it's some sort of steak. Um, I'm glad they didn't go to the place of like making him eat a fucking burrito or something. You know, like <laughs> they had some limits. Oh. Let me tell you something. We haven't seen parts two and three. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the doctor, evil doctor, is called the Asian man a kamikaze shithole. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, not nice. You know, I don't know where he's getting that from. Not nice. I believe that is dog food or it's raw meat. Raw meat. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The doctor's eating. That's the steak on the plate that is for the doctor's dinner. Oh, okay. I thought it was for him. Uh, Ugh. Or is it not? Look how raw it is. Uh, that actually makes me Ooh. hungry. Does I'm a it? sicko. Yeah, I, I love raw. I've love never been meat. less hungry in my entire life. I love red. The steak makes me hungry, people. Not the not the uh, not the uh, shitting. I gotta tell you, folks. You need to lose uh, twenty pounds. Keep this movie on in your house. I don't this ever want to uh, eat again. This is the shit scene. So if you want to divert your attention to me, uh, I can I can uh, you know. <sighs> save you from this yeah what have uh, you seen joe i got one more biggie here in a moment i saw some old classics okay well the first was a rewatch, but i just hadn't seen it since i was a kid and i own it on dvd but i watched salem's lot again and i enjoyed it very much uh, i haven't I haven't seen it i've owned it for years and never watched it uh not out of disinterest i just you know i have a shitload of movies and i saw that one when i was very young and well, I borrowed it from you and watched it. We yeah. probably should have done it on the fucking podcast. That's fine. It's a little long. But, yeah. uh, I had never seen it. Uh, but I enjoyed it very much. I, I think if you haven't seen the original Salem's Lot, it was directed by Toby Hoop. Toby Hooper. Toby, by the way. Hooper. Um, uh, it was made for television as a miniseries. It was eventually recut and shown in theaters. Uh, and it was the only television, as far as I know. Was it shown in theaters? Eventually. It okay. was recut. And it was also, I think, possibly the only television oh, movie. Oh, God, I'm sorry. The the uh, subtitles just said in parentheses, feces squirting. <laughs> I mean, and all right, I'm sorry, Joe. Go, feed go ahead. her. Feed her. <laughs> what, a, what a terrible movie. <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Uh, 
the, the, the human centipede now is in a cage and everybody's crying. <laughs> yeah, this is a movie I like to put this on every Christmas with the family. We watch this and, uh, you know, and then we'll we'll put on nine and a half weeks right after. Uh, sure. Anyway, we, um, we uh, uh, um, so I, I it was the only mo- uh, one of the only TV movies I've ever heard of being recut and then aired and shown in theaters. And then also, I believe the only TV movie ever to have a sequel that was made for theaters. Um, so yeah, it, Return it, to Salem's Lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a pretty uh, that's pretty impressive, and it's a pretty stunning film. Scariest vampires I've ever seen in anything. Like the child vampires are fucking terrifying. And then the master vampire, I think his name is, uh, um, I was almost said Barnabas, but it's, it's something along the, I know that's the dark shadows guy. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great flick. It's a slow burn. The DVD has 42 chapters. Mm-hmm. So it's long, but, uh, but I, I found it terribly enjoyable. Uh, James Mason is great in it. Yes. Uh, so I'd say check it out uh, if you haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while. The other classic I finally saw from start to finish was Puppet Master. Never seen any of them. Uh, I got the first nine Puppet Master movies in a uh, collection, in one collection from a Walmart for $4 brand new. <laughs> now, what, what brought you to Walmart, by the way? I was with my dad, and we oh, went into a that's Walmart. That's the only way I'll allow it. Walmart has terrible business practices. We, we were, I was with my dad, and we, we had to get some stuff for my dog, okay. and we drove by, and I also needed to get um, some medicine for me, so we saw a Walmart. I said, let's just pull over here. We'll, we'll get everything we need in one space, because my parents, where they live, man, it is 25 minutes between every stop. Okay. So if you got to run multiple errands, that's, that's your whole day. It's, it's, it kind of sucks. So anyway, we went in there, and uh, uh, $4 for the Puppet Master Collection, the first nine films. There are four more after that. I, I have a feeling around eight, it's going to start to teeter off a little the bit. The quality might start to slip, yeah. Uh, but, um, but I watched the first one, and, you know, it, I, I liked it. It's, you know, it's kind of what you'd expect if you haven't seen it. It's a Full Moon Features movie. It's... it's, it's, it's Low budget, considering I think the budget was about four hundred thousand for it, but it's fun. Uh, Is your intent to watch all eight? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh but I mean, I got to tell you, if the first one is the masterpiece, yeah. But the, but I've read best of lists uh, on like bloody disgusting and stuff where the the first one is never the first one is never number one on the list. So I feel like. Okay. Maybe they get better. It's interesting. The puppets look really cool. The stop motion animation is very cool. Okay. Uh, William Hickey oh, uh, sure. uh, plays the puppet master at the top of the film. Sm- small role, but I William always love seeing him and the, stuff. Uh, you know the the ancient guy from Christmas Vacation. Ancient also. guy. You know. You know how old he was when he died? Take a wild guess. Uh, Eighty. Sixty nine. Oh wow. <laughs> Boy, he did not look good. 69. This movie, Puppet Master was made in like 1989 or something like that. Yeah. He died in 1993. He looks exactly the same. Like, like maybe earlier in the 80s. Oh, oh no. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. What? 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 Oh, what's he doing? He's popping pus out of her facial scars, well, Joe. Well, pus, pus wouldn't look like that. So just remember that. He man. also just fed other ones a laxative. Oh, he did? All right. So that is my... They might as well have just done the burrito gag at that point, right? Oh, God. This is disgusting. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, William Hickey, uh, if you watch him in Pritzy's Honor, which I yeah. think was made in 1985, he's in yeah. so he's uh, barely 60 in that one. Mm-hmm. He looks like he's... He looks worse in that than he does in Christmas Vacation. That's true. So he died of emphysema. I think he was a very heavy smoker. Yeah, clearly. Uh, but my favorite William Hickey you role. You couldn't hear a dump truck driving through a nitroglycerin plant. <laughs> the blessing. <laughs> yeah, he's very funny. In that my movie. favorite, uh, uh, and our dear friend James Pinkstone would, would, I believe, agree with me. My favorite William Hickey role is in Tales from the Dark Side of the Movie. Sure. We, the, were, we watched it on the show. Yeah, in The Cat from Hell where it's just him in a wheelchair as like a crazy old man wheeling around going, the cat is evil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must be killed. Yeah. He's he's really great in that. So anyway, uh, so those were the two that I, I mean, we've only, 
you're getting this a week later, but we recorded this two days after we just did the last episode, so I didn't have really a ton of time to watch stuff, but I did check those out. I enjoyed them. My Showtime subscription ran out, so I didn't have any time to watch any more uh, um, uh, Twin Peaks ups, and I'm behind a three or so. But, I'm all uh, caught up. I, I mean, I'm still enjoying it. We can, we can get into it another time. Right. Uh, I saw last night Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan. Oh, so you Dunkirk. did see it. How was yeah. it? Well... I admire that Christopher Nolan finally learned how to make a movie that's under two hours long. Yes. I th- I really like the movies of Christopher Nolan for the most part. I think he's a, f- a very fine director. Uh, and I mean very fine, like good, not very average. Um, I thought you meant uh, hot, like he's attractive. Uh, yeah, he's, he's very fine. That's how Pat describes an attractive person. He says, <laughs> that, that is fine. Yeah. Mopping my brow. <laughs> Dunkirk... <laughs> is it's a movie that every shot is just fucking perfect like it technically it is a beautifully shot movie with awesome like aerial action sea action um but basically the the air portion and i don't know how the idiots of america followed this because i sure couldn't the aerial portion takes place over one hour the water portion takes place over one day and the land portion takes place over one week. So they, they tell you that very briefly at the beginning. Like it'll just say air one hour. But I mean, they keep cross cutting between these three things. That's a really hard concept to grasp. So a lot of the movie, you're kind of doing the mental work of like where in the timeline it is. Sure. Eventually the three intertwine and then you got it. But it's a little tricky. I admired it from a narrative standpoint. And as I said, it looks fantastic. You know there's a butt coming. The butt is... The butt into another man's mouth. That's right. Like a centipede. That's right. Yeah. As Pee Wee Herman says, there's always a big butt. Uh, you, He does nothing to make you give a shit about anyone in this movie. There is zero character development. Um, everyone's just kind of a faceless soldier. And ultimately, you wind up, even though everything happening on screen is very exciting, bored. I mean, there's there's underwater. There's like scenes where like, you know, much like the abyss, you know, like he, he's in he, he, his ejector thing doesn't go off and he's sitting there in the plane and you see the water rising, you know, and he's, he's basically trying to keep his head above water. And it should be really exciting, but you don't know or care about this person at all. I found that that was that was my problem with uh when I saw Saving Private Ryan in the theater, I, I I thought it was pretty well done. Okay, and I thought the carnage and the depiction of war was was fascinating. Right, but at the end of the day, I I didn't feel particularly attached to any of the characters when people died. Whereas, see, I that the, one at least gave you that that thing of Damon and uh, you know the, the trying to relay the message and all that. I got I got all that, yeah. but I, it didn't mean that I found the characters more developed or whatever. Sure. But I think the most fast, the mo- in my opinion, the most interesting and attached I've ever been to a character ever in a war movie is is Pyle in um, uh, Full Metal Jacket. Yes. Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. Because they take the entire first act of a movie making you give a shit about this f- one fucking guy. That's I right. I care about him more than Matthew Modine. And Matthew Modine's the goddamn star of the yes, movie. Yes, that's right. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see a little more... Um, of the smallness of of war, if you will. Yeah, I in mean, these films. Clearly, Christopher Nolan was probably like, "I want to make a movie that's two hours," and that first half hour, getting to know everybody, would have pushed it to the standard two thirty that movies are nowadays. But I think it really suffered because of it. Um, you just kind of, you're not really into it. You're not following the story like you should because you're just kind of like. It's just like watching a beautiful documentary or something. That's why I didn't care about Edge of Tomorrow. Like before the, the little, Tom Cruise one? Yeah, I didn't I didn't Oh, like I it. thought it was fucking great. The little you get to know about Tom Cruise before he's in the war or in the battle, space yeah. battle is that you don't like him that much. Right. And he's dropped in and immediately it's like I don't care. Like yeah. I'm just I'm not attached to this. And they talk about Emily Blunt and you're like, 
Okay, so they've talked about this character. I don't know who she is. Like, I don't yeah. revere her. I'm not part of this alien invasion thing that's happening. Like, I, I think part yeah. of why that movie worked for me is, A, I thought it was incredibly well written. And your dog is pulling this out, and it may be affecting our sound. Con, stop. Because it's staticking out in my ear. What was? Do you want to re-push it? The headphone was? Yeah. yeah it was, should be fine. All right. It was probably just spinning. Tom Cruise brings the whole thing with him. You know Tom Cruise. You know he's the hero. In this movie, it's Tom Hardy, who you never know anything about, despite me having seen him in 20 movies. He's always kind of an enigma. And he has a uh, face mask over him the entire time. Like Bane? Like Bane. What's the mask for? He's a pilot. Um, Does he talk like Bane in it? And then like Harry Styles from One Direction. And you kind of just don't know anything about anybody. And then, and then the actor who I find very boring uh, from Bridge of Spies, the guy who the was, main guy. He was the BFG. The, the big fucking giant? Yeah, that big fucking giant. <laughs> Why would they name a kid's movie that? I don't know. It was terrible. It either. The main guy in Bridge of Spies. Mark Rylance. I'm still shorting out my The guy ear. that got nominated. Yeah, Mark Rylance. That, that guy was BFG? He was also the BFG, and he is also in Dunkirk. But like I'm just guy. saying, th these guys aren't like the guys you know everything about. You know nothing about them. So you're just kind of like, that doesn't help. And I don't know. Harry Styles was fine in it. They were. Nolan is swearing up and down. He had no idea who Harry Styles was. I, I buy that. You know. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. You know what? I, I buy it, too. I was going to I was going to take a shot, but I, I think I do buy it. Yeah. Now, when I was on uh, Two Broke Girls at Warner Brothers across the the stage across from our stage, I saw Harry Styles every day and all these people in mm -hmm. fatigues shooting in a giant, this, uh, the exact same type of soundstage where we shot a multicam sitcom. Well, you know, Dunkirk. Also, I don't know how that happens. The One Direction manager is James Corden's guy. So that guy like works at the James Corden show a lot. Okay. That's interesting. Isn't that weird? It's weird. I don't I mean, think it's as weird as me or... telling you they filmed this... Uh, Dunkirk period piece that takes place in the sky and on land in Britain <laughs> in a Warner Brothers soundstage, well, they which filmed, was just glossed over. They filmed the interior stuff of the Warner Brothers stuff. They weren't shooting the beach scenes in the. Well, the there's no, stage. there are no interiors in Dunkirk. I mean, unless we're talking like I guess the submarine or something, like the interior, the cockpit. I don't know. I guess yeah, probably. Yeah, so. the interior of the submarine. Look, stuff. I don't know how special effects work, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Now, two broke girls. That was that show you were on. Uh, that was the uh, this is the Thor sitcom you were on. Wait, well, you've already done this bit on the show. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I thought of it the other day, and I, I I missed doing it because Kat Dennings was in Thor. Yeah, I know. I just think it's funny that to, to, that a guy's confused and doesn't understand that Two Broke <laughs> Girls isn't about Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes me laugh still. Uh, Look, what do we all have? I can tell you is Two Broke Girls is a show that really moved me into a new house. <laughs> That's a Krusty the Clown line. Joe, I swear to God, now I have no sound. So something has gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. You have no sound. Hold it's, on. It's been very staticky, and then I went completely off. Let me just check Am I still going? You Am should Am I still be. going? Hold on a second. Give me one second. I mean, these, this is why we don't do these. These are real endurance tests, guys. These uh, no, We're good. We only have about 15 minutes left. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, it keeps shorting in my ear, and I can't imagine. It's just your headphones. That That's all it that is. That doesn't translate to the That's listeners. That's all it is. Maybe it doesn't. I'll, I'll look past it, it. Well, it doesn't, because you're hearing, you're not hearing, rec hold on, trust me, because I haven't heard it, which right. means it's not happening. Yeah, you're right. It's just in your headphones, so hold on. Talk while I do this. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Yeah. Well, I'm going in and out right now. Just keep talking. Oh, you think that's it? Better, yes, that's it. Nope, it just keeps going in and out. It's very annoying for me. All right. Why don't you take the headphones off? All right, I will. Okay. One more thing you can try here. All right. Ah, there it is. Found it. Put them on again. Oh, okay. There you go. Your dog fucked us. Good? Yeah. See? Um, your dog may have a beautiful asshole, but it, it fucked us. The most beautiful. Yeah. Uh, well, Joe, I urge you to do Joe's scary stuff because I have to pee. 
Do you have something? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I, I'll be right back. I, I believe that I do. Uh, this sort of ties into, uh, well, you know, this you know this this podcast, guys. It covers fantasy, science fiction, and horror. I've been on a big, big retro video game kick. Uh, last week, I talked about the release of Slaughterhouse for the Nintendo Switch coming out uh, this. Well, actually, when this comes out, it will we'll have already been released, uh, and I will have already played it to a uh, nauseating length. Uh, but I don't have it right now. So what I'm going to talk about are two other retro video games that I have uh, obtained. You know what? One. One. Because then I can use the other one for later. Uh, I bought a TurboGrafx-16 recently. I know this is a sort of a out there thing like you might not have an interest in buying a TurboGrafx-16 or you might not have any ability to come across one. Uh, it's not like they're, you know, just sitting in Target or something. I had to kind of comb the internet a little bit for this thing. And uh, they're, uh, for retro game collectors, affordable. And that's, you know, I think they're about 100 bucks to buy an old used one, which for gaming systems, that's, 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 a, that's considered affordable. Um, the games, however, are not. They are fucking expensive because they are really out of print and super rare. Uh, and, you know, this was a system nobody gave a shit about when it came out. It competed with the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, and it was certainly the th in third place in that race. Um, and it faded away pretty quickly. Uh, as far as video game systems go, it's got a very, very limited supply of games. That all being said, I bought a game for this thing. And I, I can't tell you the dollar amount. That's the Glen Gary Glen Ross thing. It wasn't like over a hundred dollars or anything like that. But I paid more for this old video game than I am, than I feel not embarrassed to say. Um, but it's an amazing game. It's called Devil's Crush. And here's why I went above and beyond out of the pocketbook for this game. It's my favorite video game of all time. It is a horror pinball game on the Turbo Graphics 16. And when I say horror, I don't mean just like skulls and shit like that. I mean satanic imagery, pentagrams, weird, dark monks and cloaks, demon ladies. It's d demons, period. Sure. It's fucking amazing. I love this game so much. If you have a Turbo Graphics and you don't have this game, I strongly, strongly suggest you buy it. It also, uh, if you have a Genesis, came out on Genesis, and I think on Genesis it was called like Devil Crash or something like that. Uh, and the dev and the Genesis one is 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 almost identical to the the Turbo Graphics gets the edge. The sounds just a bit better. Uh, on that one, which which I think makes a difference in a game like this because you're playing pinball. You kind of want that soundtrack to really hit. But Devil Crash, if I didn't know the difference, uh, would Joe, be I'm perfectly back. fine. You, you can wrap this up. I'm just telling the people about a game that I got. I mean, even I glaze over on these game segments. Well, do you do, All but right. you're not everybody. <laughs> Uh, we don't even have the picture up on the screen currently for this commentary <laughs> podcast, which is a new low. For well, this because commentary. you because you got scared about your headphones and I yeah, just no, tried to right. fix it. Anyway, um, Devil's Crush on Turbo Graphics or Devil Crash on Sega Genesis. Check it out. It's, in my opinion, an excellent, excellent horror video game. All right. And worth the money. All right. Um, gang, we're looking at three people attached at the rectum trying to escape they I, I hope you're not watching along with us she's starting to it's starting to rip either her mouth or his anus i believe it's um, uh i believe it's his anus that is tied to her tied to her. why isn't he in more pain than his the part, anus is being ripped here's out. the part i don't get about this they've been attached now as the centipede for for what i can understand a few days yeah they're gleaming just milky skin still yeah that's they don't true. have any dirt on them no yeah, everybody looks Ooh. like they just got out of the shower do you think joe that this was a light fun set where they they laughed to, yes. to lighten the mood i do you do i do i've heard i've heard frequently about some of the more um intense and hardcore horror films that the sets are often 
pretty jovial because they want everybody to be enjoying the experience because yeah. of the, the depths they have to go to when they're actually shooting. Remember but, that one you and I saw at the... Uh, at I don't the, even want to talk the about the horror it. festival where they all fuck the dead girl. Yeah, that, that, see, that's the shit I can't deal with. I can't deal with shit like that. I mean, to me, it's kind of like another day at the office. But <laughs> if the office is the morgue, <laughs> the yeah, I can't. That's the kind of shit that upsets me greatly. Like, Fucking women that are dead. Yeah, it yeah, should. It yeah, should. Yeah, dead women. Like, like this to me is gross, but it's so bad shit that I don't care. Yeah, like, boy, I really do. Though. Corpse sex is is a very real problem we have in this country. <laughs> and, <laughs> is and it? it upsets me. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Shit, somebody better do something. Um, right after we ban people who want to serve in the military. Folks, I'll get off it. I'll get off it. You think he'd go after the corpse fuckers? Yeah, you do. You would. You know, we got a goddamn corpse problem in this in this country. <laughs> Too many corpses are too good looking. Who's who is the joke about the guy? Oh, Artie Lang. It's such a good joke. He talks about the guy fucking his parrot, got arrested because he kept oh, yeah. fucking his parrot. And he goes, of all the animals you could have sex with, why would you have sex with the one that could tell people That's about it? That's a funny it? joke. <laughs> Told on the crashing program. And Artie is apparently back in crashing. So yeah. I guess they're just like, I'm happy about that. Let's roll the dice again. I'm happy he's in, man. I'm really happy he's in. I love that guy. Three of my best friends who I get dinner with about once a month, John and Hayden, uh, who did the Harold and Kumar films, and my buddy Josh Heald, who did the Hot Tub Time Machine film, they have had a wager going for, uh, I guess, I think since they were friends in high school, they're older than me, that Artie Lang would be dead by his 50th birthday. Oh, that's terrible. And if he is alive, then they will... You know, they, they all owe the person a thousand dollars who wins and they go to Vegas and have like a crazy weekend and the, and it's coming up. But they all thought when they keep hearing about things getting worse, they're like, look, they're, they're huge Artie fans. OK, they're huge. Artie yeah, fans. I can't I can't laugh at a death pool about Artie. He's one of my closest friends. At the same time, they're also kind of like. Of course, he'll be dead by 50. It's like eight months away, but he just keeps hanging in there. He just tweeted Wait, out. He's cutting his throat now. Is he killing himself? I think so. God, I hate this movie. He uh, he just tweeted out. He just had a incident where he collapsed. Right. Yes. Because of not, I don't think because of any act of abuse, but because of abuse from the past. Right. Kind of caught up with him. And he tweeted out, I tre I che I've cheated the devil for the hundredth time. Like, yeah. You know, and I called him and I was talking to him and he's like, he's like, look, man, I, you know, I, my doctor's a bit like an ox. So, yeah. you know, I just keep I'm good. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I'm like, it is it is incredible. Yeah. It makes you really anytime like I should rein things in. It makes me want to go harder because I at my yeah. worst day. I'm nowhere near the depths of uh, what already. I told him that to once. I told him that once. I was like, I was like, when I talked about this stuff, I'm sick with myself. And he yeah. goes, why? And I go, because I can't commit to it like you can. Sure. And he, he thought that was funny, but it's true. Like, I, yeah. I, I look at myself and I'm disgusted. <laughs> I just like, just just go down the road already. Yeah. Well, you could really do it. I mean, you're not hitting some nine to five. No, no. I mean, I, but, I'm losing. I'm a, I'm a fucking boss now. I have to be running things and I, I hate it. Listen, Pat, if I'm going to dazzle the audiences of the CBS network, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, what I mean? and you will, you will. I just I feel I feel that I need to look beautiful. Yeah. And you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dietrich. La Did you ever confirm if this guy's name is Dietrich Laser? It is Dietrich Laser. I mean, he, I'm sure he has. I'm sure it's a stage name. I didn't look that up. Uh, now, he kills himself near the pool here, if I'm not mistaken. Why would Dietrich kill himself? Because they're going to arrest him? Because the police are raiding his house, and yeah. he's got three people with their assholes <laughs> and mouths sewn together. That fucking coward. You know what? This guy seems like a real jerk to me. <laughs> Worst of all, he's a quitter. Yeah. <laughs> not a fan. Uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> not a fan. Yeah. Um, I was just going to tell you about what were you talking about a minute ago, before the Artie thing? Because I had something to tell you. I don't know. But let me ask you another serious question. Yeah. You and I 
I guess we've really only been friends about three, four years or something. Three and a half years. But, um, you know, we're close friends. I say to you, this movie doesn't exist, and I say to you, look, before I met you, I was like 25 years old, and I just got into some weird shit online. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I got obsessed with the idea of, of making a human centipede. I explained to you what it is, and then I kept these three people in my basement, and they escaped, and nobody ever pressed charges, and I tell you what I did and everything. Are we able to remain friends? I wouldn't believe you. Because you know me to be too good a man. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, I just would believe. I just wouldn't believe you. I'd think you were fucking with me. It would take a lot for you to get me to believe you. Well, is my point. Assume that you believe me, and I'm telling you that this is something no, I actually I, did. No, we're we're not we're not friends anymore. And even if oh. I thought we could be, yeah. I wouldn't say it. Committing it to recording right now, so people could say Joe DeRose is the kind of guy that would remain friends with a human centipede guy. You're right. You're right. I just want to. I just want to know what kind of friendship I'm in here. Is it? Uh, You're in a real friendship. I'd are you? Are you my ride or die, bitch? Or, I'm your or no? ride or die, bitch. Yeah. Uh, let's say we're out in the streets one night, and you have to kill a man in cold blood, but it's in self defense, and I know it is. Right. And the and the heat's on your tail. Yeah. I got your back, buddy. See, I, all right. If I'm killing a man in self defense, then okay. Why wouldn't I just go to the cops and say it was self defense? Because they won't believe me. Nobody's going to believe this was self defense. Haven't you seen the movies? Yeah. You got to go to Bermuda till things cool off. Right. But uh, but not in a well, human Well, you know what I do have on my side, situation. though? I'm white. Oh, boy. Here so they'll probably be like, look, we're going to turn the other way on this one and then savagely beat. A 14-year-old black kid for playing Frisbee too close to a public pool or something. <laughs> You're going hard on the hard on the commentary. <laughs> Look, it, it's a shitty time. It is. You know, to be anyone who isn't a white guy, and I have to do my part to assuage my guilt about being a white guy. Because uh, I, I just feel terrible for everyone who isn't. Quite frankly, I'm disgusted. Which doesn't mean I feel good for me or, I'm or other white guys, whiteness. by the way. Yeah. Because you're a hell of a whitey. Well, Joe. You're a gleaming white. I know you claim to, uh, you know, to be a, an other, an other box on on the census form, but you're a white guy as well. <laughs> I never had. Uh, I don't think I ever got the census. Did they still do a census? I don't think. No, I, I don't think anybody comes to your door anymore. Yeah. Did they stop making census? The last guy that came to my door was a kid selling candy bars for his school, or no, magazine subscriptions for his school. No one ever knocks my door. And we just I, glossed over stop making census. A little talking heads reference. Not a not an LOL. Oh, stop but, making, oh, but not terrible. I didn't even get it when you said yeah. it. I, because it's it's so accurate. Yeah. I thought you were saying literally just saying like they stopped making the census. Yeah. I thought that's what you were saying. We here at We'll See You in Hell would love to shout out uh, the great Mr. Jonathan Demi, who directed one of the horror classics of all time, maybe the best serial killer movie ever made, Silence of the Lambs, as well as Stop Making Sense, maybe the best concert movie ever made, starring the great talking heads. Uh, it is it is a great film. It is a great film. Now you want to talk about selfish. Here we are at the end of the film. Yeah, cops are dead. Uh, Dietrich Laser is dead. Yeah, the human centipede is in a room trying to with their last breath escape. Uh, why are why are they dying? Well, because because you want to talk selfish. The goddamn Asian guy oh, killed, cause himself. killed himself because the guy kept calling him Mister Kamikaze and he fucking kamikaze at the end. Yeah, he killed himself, and then these chicks are just. So into his asshole because he couldn't live with the guilt, probably, which I get. But, you know, the guilt of what? It wasn't his idea. I don't get that. Joe, if you shit in a woman's mouth, you're going to feel something whether you whether or not it was your idea or not. Well, Pat, I you're going to feel something. I hate to break it to you. I didn't feel anything. No, don't. Ready? Don't. Ready? 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 Don't. Last Saturday morning. Oh, I thought you were going to. No. I invoke the name of my sweet mother jill walsh <laughs> no. um the uh but i'm saying you don't you, you, you let these 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 girls to hang man what are they supposed to do now that, that that here's my point i hear what you're saying him killing himself was more selfish because now they're just yeah. stuck to his asshole but to call the asian guy a kamikaze and like you know and all this and then make him the coward who kills himself it's also like make him the hero or something is this how this really ends with them all attached and slowly dying in his house. That's how this movie's going to end. I thought the one uh, lady got away. 
All three of them are still sitting there. They keep writing. This is a subtitle right now. Birds chirping in the they distance. They always say birds chirping in the distance. Yeah, nobody in this needs movie. to know. Nobody cares. No. Nobody fucking cares. That is the end uh, of the movie. That's the end. Unbelievable. I thought the one girl got away, but I guess I'm wrong. He, look, here's a rule. If you're going to make me sit through that for 90 minutes, give me revenge. Let them kill the man. Well, that's not what it's about because Tom Six is an artist. Yeah. Well, well, folks, I'd say that's our show. That is our show. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this return to commentary. I, I eagerly await the tweets that now say, I don't like the commentary ones. I wish you'd go back to the other ones because you guys are never happy. But that's why we keep striving to make you happy. What is that burst of sound in the middle? What's that going to be in the blue? It's just the uh, I got this. Don't worry All about right. it. Joe's got it, guys. Uh, any plugs? No plugs for me. We are going to be back now in two weeks' time. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our our return, and we will see you soon. We will see you in hell. Joe, do you have plugs? Uh, yeah, Comedy Train Festival this week, Amsterdam, where I believe this movie took place. I think so. <laughs> so be careful. Kyle Kinane and I co-headlining four nights, August 2nd through the 5th. Come out and see us. Cut to you and Kyle Kinane joined at the anus. <laughs> We'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>